Dear friends, welcome to yet another installment of Orbital Geek. In this video, we explore some surprising truths about the composition of our body and quantum physics. Discover how the particles that make us up are incredibly old and unravel the mysteries of the atoms that make us who we are. We're going to demystify popular concepts and reveal fascinating facts about our molecular structure and the nature of the universe. Have you ever wondered how much of your body is actually empty space? Or how quantum physics challenges our perception of reality? Stay with us until the end to discover these and other incredible truths. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating content. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but your face is full of thousands of tiny mites that spend the day eating your skin and the night breeding in your pores. It sounds like the plot of a low-budget horror movie, but believe it, it's true. These mites are called Demodex folliculorum. They measure approximately 0.3 millimeters. They have elongated bodies and four pairs of legs attached to their strange little heads, looking a bit like a miniature xenomorph from Alien. If you want to blame someone for this rather embarrassing infestation, I suggest you talk to your mother, as it's believed the mites are transmitted from mother to child during breastfeeding. The fact is that, as disturbing as it is to find out that your face is practically a breeding ground for tiny, bizarre creatures, the truth is that besides the initial urge to scratch your cheek really well, most of us don't worry too much about these facial mites. This is because we humans live in the macroscopic world, so much so that it's easy to forget that other dimensions exist. But they do, and a slight change in perspective can utterly transform the way we view the world around us, and even ourselves. Let me try to give you an example of what I mean. When you look at me now, speaking on your screen, you see a person. That makes sense, but it's only one way of looking at things. I may be a human being, but I'm also made up of 78 different organs, five of which are essential for me to stay alive. These organs, along with the rest of my body, are made up of cells. These cells, in turn, are composed of a complex cocktail of molecules, and these molecules are made up of atoms, close to seven octillion of them in total. That's a one followed by 27 zeros. So while it's true to say that I'm a human being, it's also correct to say that I'm a seven octillion piece puzzle, skillfully arranged to perform some pretty neat tricks. This difference may seem purely semantic, but when you start looking at the world around you at the atomic level, things get pretty weird. Your cells are constantly regenerating, about 1% of them, around 330 billion cells, are replaced every single day. This is fairly well known, but what's less well known is that the atoms of those cells don't regenerate, ever. Atoms are the smallest possible unit of an element that still retains all of the properties of that element. As far as we know, stable atoms, those that aren't radioactive, last practically forever. It may be that even stable atoms will eventually decay due to proton decay, but scientists still aren't sure about that, and even if it does happen, it would take far longer than the remaining lifetime of our universe. So for all intents and purposes, stable atoms are eternal. Again, this may not seem like a big deal, but think for a moment about what that means. You're made up of atoms, and most of those atoms last forever. In other words, parts of your body will still be out there when the universe finally ceases to exist, trillions of years from now. Forget the Philosopher's Stone or the Fountain of Youth. You, watching this video, are immortal. What's more, there's another side to that coin. Not only will the atoms that make you up still be around in the far future, but those same atoms are already incredibly ancient. Despite our apparent complexity, chemically, we humans are actually pretty simple. 99% of our body is made up of just four elements, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. Virtually all of the hydrogen in the entire universe including the approximately eight kilograms of hydrogen atoms that are in you right now, was created during the Big Bang some 13.7 billion years ago. Your oxygen, carbon and nitrogen atoms, on the other hand, were forged in the fiery furnaces of long dead ancient stars, and the heavier atoms in your body were flung into the cold, dark reaches of space by supernovae billions of years old. On a macro level, you might be 20 or 30 years old, but on an atomic level, your body is billions of years old. It's such a weird concept 
that it almost doesn't make sense. And yet, literally, it's absolutely true. Most of the atoms that make you up were created billions of years before the formation of the sun. You're an incredibly ancient being. You're also remarkably empty. The incredible longevity of atoms isn't their only weird property, because these building blocks of matter are almost entirely made up of empty space. And since you're made of atoms, so are you. Let me explain. If I asked you to draw an atom right now, you'd probably draw something like this, an example of the Bohr model, commonly called the planetary model, because it looks a little bit like a miniature version of the solar system. The atomic nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons, is like the sun, and the electrons orbit around like planets. Although developed over a hundred years ago by the Danish physicist Niels Bohr, the planetary model is probably the most widely taught representation of an atom in schools around the world to this day. But in fact, the Bohr model has some major shortcomings. For starters, the scale is completely off. Although to be fair, we can't really blame Niels Bohr for that. It's pretty much impossible to represent an atom on a single page for the simple reason that no page will ever be big enough. Atoms are, of course, incredibly tiny, but the particles that make them up, protons, neutrons, and electrons, are even smaller. If an atom were blown up to the size of a football stadium, its nucleus would be about the size of a peanut. The rest, 99.99 .99 million percent of the atom's volume, is just empty space. And therefore, so are we. Or at least, that's what hundreds of newspaper and magazine articles would have you believe. But it turns out that whole 99.99 .99 million percent empty space story is, in fact, a myth. And it became so widespread for the same reason you've probably already forgotten those mites living on your face. As I said at the start, us humans just aren't very good at internalizing things that don't happen on our scale. As you probably know, in our macroscopic world, the universe can be described very well by the classical physics of Sir Isaac Newton and Galileo Galilei. But at the microscopic scale, those laws no longer apply. Down here, quantum physics, the weird cousin of classical physics, is queen. When we look at the Bohr model of an atom, we see electrons orbiting the nucleus like tiny planets following distinct orbits. This is a very classical, macroscopic way of picturing what's going on inside an atom. And since classical physics doesn't apply at these scales, this view is completely wrong. In reality, an electron is not a tiny particle with a defined position like a planet orbiting a star. It's a wave function that forms something that can be better represented as a kind of cloud. A cloud that fills the entirety of the atom. In a sense, the electron is everywhere at once. Although, thanks to the utter weirdness of quantum physics, if we actually try to measure its position at any given moment, we'll find it at some specific location. But since the wave function fills the whole atom, it's incorrect to say that we humans are 99.99 .99 million percent empty space. The funny thing is that this common myth actually obscures some truths that are, arguably, just as interesting as that. For instance, you might not be mostly empty space, but by volume, you are 99.99 .99 million percent electron wave function, which is always nice. And that's not all. You see, compared to protons and neutrons, electrons have very little mass, which is why over 99.9% .9 of an atom's mass comes from its nucleus. But as we've already seen, the atomic nucleus is incredibly tiny compared to the atom that houses it. And that means that over 99.9% .9 of your mass comes from just 0.0001% of your volume. Physics is weird, isn't it? In the face of these revelations about the nature of the atoms that make us up, it's undeniable that we are part of something much vaster and more ancient than we can fathom. Quantum physics challenges us to rethink our understanding of the universe, leading us to question the very fabric of reality. So I ask you, how much more do we need to discover about ourselves and the world around us? What are the implications of these truths for our understanding of life and death? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and join the conversation about what it means to be human in such a vast and mysterious universe.